Batman's iconic gadgets have always looked appealing to us, but are they practical in real life? In the 1966 Batman movie, one of the most absurd gadgets used by the hero is the shark repellent spray, which he uses to fend off an open shark. Technically, a device that uses pheromones to deter predatory animals in the oceans could be used in real life, but it's not necessarily reliable. After all, something that scares off one shark could anger another. So, while theoretically possible for Batman's shark repellent spray to save him, it's also likely that it could provoke the shark instead. Although theoretically possible, the multitude of unknown variables would make such a spray unreliable at best. In Batman Begins, Batman uses a sonic device to create a sonic wave that calls forth a swarm of giant bats and then enables his escape amidst the chaos. From a practical standpoint, training thousands of bats to respond to a specific frequency would be necessary. Additionally, the device would undoubtedly attract or disturb animals other than bats. However, the idea that the sound could travel for kilometers through a crowded city to reach enough bats to aid the hero is far-fetched. While it may seem like an interesting concept, it's entirely absurd. In Batman Begins, one of the major plot points revolves around the microwave emitter used by Ra's al Ghul. This device could be dangerous for entirely different reasons. The microwave emitter used to vaporize Gotham's drug water source theoretically would have the same effect on the water content in human bodies, resulting in an incredibly gruesome and temporarily effective means of killing them. However, even if the emitter was set not to do this, it would still emit microwaves that are incredibly harmful to humans. Concentrated microwaves can have a range of negative effects, making its use in Batman Begins almost impossible. Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy reimagined Batman as a hero who could potentially exist in the real world, with many of his gadgets based on the latest military technology. While the trilogy's Batmobile was designed to be as practical as possible, the motorcycle version called the Batpod is deceptively unrealistic. While navigating the narrow streets of Gotham, the Batpod's wheels spin to provide greater maneuverability. However, the momentum of the Batpod could cause the bike to lose control, making it nearly impossible to practically implement such technology. In The Dark Knight, Batman uses an unethical sonar device to quickly map out Gotham by manipulating civilians' phones. However, this wouldn't work in real life. While theoretically possible to hack millions of mobile devices simultaneously, modern phone speakers would ultimately make it impossible to provide the required frequency for the sonar effect. Phones cannot emit the necessary frequency for the sonar device, making the seemingly grounded device Batman uses to jeopardize the privacy of thousands entirely illogical. Batman equips Catwoman with a series of contact lenses that can broadcast her actions live to the Batcave upon learning about her access to Gotham City's corrupt underworld. While it may be possible to transmit high-resolution images in real time, the technology definitely wouldn't fit into undetectable contact lenses as of yet. Despite the technology being somewhat implausible, Batman does a commendable job of making it seem realistic, even if it wouldn't work in real life. Perhaps Batman's most iconic gadget is his grappling hook. However, even this wouldn't work in real life. Batman, in addition to being physically imposing, wears an armored suit and is equipped with numerous gadgets. The grappling gun is typically the size of a small handgun and doesn't contain a cable strong enough to support its own weight. Furthermore, the hook itself is almost always very small. Both the gun and the hook would need to be much larger to support Batman's weight. In each live-action iteration, Batman has a cape, though it varies slightly each time. Batman is often depicted gliding through the air using his cape, but scientifically, this isn't really possible. The surface area of the cape is relatively small and does little to slow down even a simple descent. Therefore, using the cape to effectively fly through the streets of Gotham is entirely fictional, making it another Batman movie gadget that wouldn't work in real life.